When was the last time you whispered something in another person's ear that you didn't want anyone else to hear? Shh. Secrets. We all have them. Some are good, like Christmas gifts. Keeping certain secrets prove you are trustworthy. Others bring a blessing when they're revealed. Hi, I'm Kirsten D. Samuel, Aftershock Recovery Method Coach. And if you're keeping a secret that needs to be brought into the light, I hope you'll hop on over to kirstendsamuel.com and click the book a free session button. I'd love to help you unpack how to safely tell that secret. Throughout our marriage, I've managed to keep only a couple of fun secrets from Dave, not for lack of trying. He's very difficult to surprise, or I'm terrible at keeping secrets, but some secrets can cause pain. What is that one thing you hope no one ever finds out about you? You know what I'm talking about. If anyone discovered this secret, you're positive you'd be rejected, despised, humiliated, ostracized, or worse. Life as you know it would be over and you're convinced you'd never recover. I kept that secret, which almost destroyed me. But once I told the secret, I found freedom. You can read about this devastating secret in my book, Choosing a Way Out. I'll put the link below. Contrary to my self-protective amygdala response, the best thing I did was to tell someone and get help. Thankfully, God directed me to the person who would help and protect me at the same time. You see, not everyone can be trusted with your secret. Throughout the recovery process, I discovered that some people who learned about my personal and marriage crisis proved unable, unwilling, or untrustworthy to handle the truth. Discerning who to share the story with challenged and grew me. I made many mistakes. I experienced stares, hushed voices, and halted conversations in certain circles. For someone already wounded and bleeding, these untrustworthy people deepened the pain and confusion I felt. So check your motives behind telling your secret. Words bring life or death. When dealing with betrayal trauma and your pain, it's too easy to share what's happening in such a way that it paints the betrayer as badly as possible. You might find yourself oversharing details that are no one else's business. Christine Kane once said that a person who's overcome abuse doesn't need to share all the details. Using your words to vilify your betrayer doesn't bring healing or freedom. Only when you take that pain to God and ask him to heal you do you experience the healing you desperately desire. People who want those juicy details probably aren't safe. Think about a time when you asked someone to pray with you over a certain situation. How did that person respond? Mature, emotionally intelligent, and trustworthy people listen well and take the issue to God. They don't need the details because God already knows them. Those kind of people provide safe haven that you need along with a support system throughout your healing process. You quickly learn when you're recovering from betrayal trauma that people who push for all the details most often spread rumors. Unless you're talking with a doctor, therapist, or counselor, or coach, sharing the details might cause more harm than good. What secrets are you holding tightly today, my friend? Would you classify them as healthy with a blessing attached? I bet you can't wait to reveal them and celebrate with the other person. However, if the secret you're holding is unhealthy, please reach out. Don't allow that secret to cause any more damage. You can tell the secret without destroying another person or you. Please go to my website and click that button. Together we'll unlock your true freedom, joy, and find your life worth living.